Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point. This is a podcast based on a blog of the same name because if you're going to fight the future, you need a strong, easy to remember name, okay? I am the blogger in question and the moderator of this podcast. My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For at Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU exclamation point wants to wish you happy holidays and a happy new year. We hope you have been following releases of brand new episodes throughout November and December of this year, and we have several more new episodes on the way. As always, though, because the panelists and I have to live lives behind the podcast, including enjoying holiday festivities like the rest of the world, the episodes are being published once per week in many seasons, kind of like The Walking Dead. So subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes to stay on top of brand new episodes. We have several episodes already published discussing Downton Abbey, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Doctor Who, Orange is the New Black, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Once Upon a Time. We've taken a look back at True Blood and more episodes are in the works, including a look back at the show Ally McBeal, a look forward at How to Get Away with Murder, and hopefully many, many more. If you don't hear your show in this podcast format, though, check out the blog. Fellow panelists and I still write reviews and we're always seeking new podcast panelists, so if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter, follow us at CPU Podcast, and an email address at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com. Of course, you can always subscribe to the blog and sign the guest book or comment on posts you see. We love feedback. Honest, we do. Today's panel and I are looking back at one of this panel's absolute favorites of all time. In fact, if you didn't already figure it out, this show is so well liked by our panel and went on for so long, it lasted for nine seasons, that one mere podcast episode will not suffice to cover our thoughts. So this is the third of five CPU exclamation point episode discussions in which we will be reflecting upon this groundbreaking program, including the mid-season revival event miniseries related to it, scheduled to premiere on on Fox in January 2016. I'm, of course, talking about The X-Files, the science fiction horror drama created by Chris Carter that aired on the Fox network from 1993 to 2002 to the overall tune of 202 episodes. The series revolves around FBI special agents Fox Mulder, played by David Duchovny, and Dana Scully, played by Gillian Anderson, investigating so-called X-Files, i.e. marginalized, unsolved cases outside of the FBI mainstream involving paranormal phenomena. Agent Mulder wholeheartedly believes in the existence of aliens in the paranormal, while Scully, a skeptic, is assigned to apply scientific analysis to Mulder's discoveries for the purpose of debunking his work and steering him back toward the FBI mainstream, in which he was initially a gifted profiler on the fast track. Early in this series, both agents become pawns in a larger conflict and come to trust only each other. They develop a close relationship, which begins as a platonic friendship but becomes a romance, despite early resistance by the show's creator by the end of the series. The first seven seasons feature Duchovny and Anderson and their characters equally. In the last two seasons, Anderson took precedence while Duchovny appeared intermittently. As a result, new main characters were introduced in FBI agents John Doggett, played by Robert Patrick, and Monica Reyes, played by Annabeth Gish. Episodes consist of so-called mythology story arcs devoted to the larger nefarious conspiracy to cover up the existence of extraterrestrials and their apparently hostile aims, as well as Monster of the Week episodes, i.e. standalone episodes, exploring subjects of horror, science fiction, humanism, and at times humor. For a more detailed plot summary and or to read or hear other X-Files podcast entries in this series, check out the blog. If you didn't already know, you can click the floating box at the top right of the header, the picture of the TV watcher, and search for any blog entry or prior podcast episode. One of the perks of modern technology. In the meantime, today, in this third part of our five-part discussion, our robust panel of X-Files scholars, including our resident Mulders, Nick, Sarah, and Hillary, our resident Skinner, Kyle, your scully turned Mulder moderator, Kylie, as well as Jack, the junior podcaster, 
We'll talk about the finer and less fine points of the original X-Files program in another chapter of our Looking Back podcast episodes, where we review a show that has been gone, either via natural end or cancellation, for some time. In this episode, we will be focusing specifically upon seasons 7 through 9, covering the series in its final seasons and its slow but steady meander, some might say its marked decline, toward what would be its then finish line. It should be noted that all of our panelists have viewed the entire series and may discuss sensitive plot points. Let's face it, they will discuss sensitive plot points. So, for those of you who haven't watched The X-Files, first, you need to get on that, you're way behind the times, and second, listen at your own risk, as there may be major spoilers. Welcome back, Sarah, Nick, Hillary, Kyle, and Jack! Hello! Hello. How's it going with y'all? How, how's your lives? Good. Great. <laughs> it's going good. It's going good. Um, Jack is in the Johnny Jumper, so if you hear bouncing, that's him. Sounds good. Well, I'm sure he still has a few opinions about the X-Files. He'll sure. chime in. I, I don't doubt it. I don't <laughs> doubt it. Okay, so as we indicated in the introduction here, we are focusing today on seasons 7 through 9. So if you've listened to the first two parts of our X-Files podcast, you know that we've kind of been discussing the seasons as a whole and then talking about our favorite and least favorite episodes of those seasons. And where we left off was with Season 6. We're now going to go into Season 7. Of course, if for those of the unfamiliar who might be listening to this podcast, Season 7 is the last season in which David Duchovny appeared as a full-time series regular. And much of it felt like a swan song for him, even though he came back at times over the next two seasons. So let's talk about Season 7. What did you think of it? How did you feel about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? It has some great standalone episodes. And it, it does have some episodes that stand out as some of the best throughout the series. Maybe not too many, but there are some standouts. Yeah, I would still agree with that assessment. I still think that it's a really great season, even though they were kind of steering things in David Duchovny's end direction. I still feel that it was a really strong season, and they took a couple different takes that they hadn't in previous seasons. I feel like they kind of focused a little bit on reality show takes on things, which was provided for a lot of entertaining episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot more like reference to culture, like video game culture, reality TV, and the X-Cops episode. Mm -hmm. So it really was more of a commentary on the times, which some of my best, the, some of my all-time favorite episodes are in this season, and, okay. and also my least favorite out of all, like all the X Files seasons is in this one. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking about that shortly. <laughs> Sarah, how did you feel? It has some good episodes. It's I have to read the descriptions. I don't remember them. Okay. I don't. I did. They just don't stand out in my mind. Some of them, but not my least favorite season. Not my favorite. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's talk about some of the standout episodes Nick was talking about. Like I said, we're going to talk about some of our favorites and some of our not as favorites. And since you said there were standout episodes, Nick, we'll okay. start with you. What were some of your favorite episodes out of season seven? Whether people think it's good or they're good or bad, they definitely stand out. X Cops and Hollywood AD. I personally enjoy them yes. a lot, especially Skinner and Hollywood AD. Those yeah. little moments yeah. of him fully embracing the. Uh, Hollywood kind of culture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hollywood AD made my list of favorites as well. It's clearly the X-Files episode for the X-Files fans. Mm -hmm. There's so many in-jokes in yes. this entire episode. So many flashbacks and references. Duchovny wrote it and directed yeah. it. What better source beyond Chris Carter, I guess. And it's hilarious. I actually just recently rewatched it, and I'm still in stitches when I watch that episode. Good guest stars. Good guest yeah. stars. Really good. Well, and one of them being then his wife, right. Taya Leone. <laughs> Gary Shandling. And Gary Shandling, yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. No, he, because, yeah, because he's kind of not the same sort of amazing, brooding physicality as Mulder, and yet they went with it. So Because apparently they look alike. They can manipulate, I guess. Well, that was the joke. That was always the joke for me. Yeah. And, and then it's, who did they get for Skinner? We don't see, but it is, I can't remember who it was, but it was someone Mulder would have wanted to be playing him. Oh, yeah, I can't remember I who did they say. You just rewatched it. I know. That's more of an oblique reference. I was like, 
you know, okay. enjoying it all. <laughs> so yeah. I don't think it registered. Yeah, you definitely get a sense of David Duchovny's humor in the episode, which is, because that's just how he is. If you've seen him on talk shows or anything like that, that is definitely his humor coming through. Well, and I think even just season seven, his humor is coming through in, like, a lot. Because, like, X-Cops, which was one of my favorite episodes, and First Person Shooter, like, his line delivery on, like, those comedic so moments is perfect. Mm-hmm. That's why X-Cops, like, I, I, I laugh the entire episode just because, like, every time he looks at the camera and says something, it's perfect. Like, the timing is perfect. Same with first person shooter. And there's a scene with all the cops interviewing this very beautiful woman and just like when he's going in to interview him and he like looks at the way he just the way he looks at him and bites his just finger. The gesture, just the gesture, gesture, gesture and the look in his eyes and face. <laughs> it's just it's so funny. First person shooter being the episode where it's this huge, like, real life video game that you get to play. What other episodes did you like? What else made oh, you like? I have X Cops as my favorite yeah. for this season. X Cops. I didn't mean so to be favorite. cliche, yeah. but what can you do? It's hilarious. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it is hilarious. It was so such a smart it. episode to do it like that. Yeah. My favorite part is Scully trying to not be on camera. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, uh, her complete uncomfortableness. <laughs> yes. And Mulder just like going with it yeah, and embracing like, it. What? <laughs> the FBI the has nothing out. to hide. <laughs> Right. My favorite okay. line out of any X Files is Mulder to Scully, like, it's okay, Scully, I don't think it's live. She just said fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but it was bleeped out. <laughs> yes, it was bleeped out. Still pranking. I love how they were able to make Freddy Krueger a monster. Yeah. It was just for a little bit. Yeah. It was nice. Mm-hmm. I believe this was a Vince Gilligan episode. And he was very upset with Fox. He wanted no indication that it was going to be an X-Files episode when it started. As long as possible, he really wanted to, like, not trick the audience, but just make it seem like it is more of an episode of Fox. And he tried to do the same thing with Drive, if you remember. I don't... Is that this season or the next one? Let's drive this season. Oh. It's the same thing where it's the news bulletin about the chase. He was always pushing that, like, how can we start this as different as possible? Mm Mm-hmm. So you're saying that's what he was trying to do with X-Cops, too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, not even have the... I think it's the X-Files logo comes up with the Fox lights. Yes, like, he didn't want yeah. that it does. either. But another episode, and maybe it's because of the Saw movies that it stands out more to me, but Brand X, it's the guy who plays Jigsaw. Yeah. In a part that's I have that one him. on my disgust factor it's, list. It is. Yeah, it's a little gross. <laughs> it's, well, it's high on the gross meter. <laughs> so... But yeah, he is the guy from the Saw movies. Mm-hmm. Toby Bell. Bell. Yeah, yeah, he's actually probably... It's not my... Brand X is not my favorite episode, but he is probably the most charismatic part of it, mm-hmm. which I think is really interesting. Yeah, and like I said, I think that's why it stands out more to me, and I look forward to it when it com- it's coming up. And I like Thief. That one, those, I think they both feel more like an older episode. Yeah. Like it has that structure. Mm-hmm. Where some, if, I would, if it was like random on TV that I was watching X-Files... I don't think I would have guessed this is season seven. It feels more like a three or a four. But Thief is the one where the guy's using voodoo to kill off the doctor's family. I think that's... I enjoy that one I think his name is Billy Drago. He was on a lot of movies. He's in a lot of horror movies. Yeah, Yeah. a lot of horror movies. He played a demon on Charmed. He's really good at the creepy. Like, he's just... Yeah. I really liked Horizon because I love Donnie Faster and to have him come back like five seasons later when you almost forget about it, and then just have him come back was awesome. That was really interesting to me, and I think the reason why it's interesting, for some reason he doesn't scare me as much in this episode, and maybe it's because they show him as the devil at times. But then there's that song, and I, the thing that I love about that episode is how Mulder kind of the song that Scully hears throughout the episode, mm-hmm. she's, no one else can hear it, Mulder can't hear it, and this is how she's kind of following the signs and picking up the clues that eventually, you know, lead them back around to him. But Mulder hears the song on the radio and realize that she's, realizes she's in trouble, and that's how he comes to find her. Yeah, that one, I, I said almost the exact same thing to Nick because we were going over our scariest. And he's like, what about Horizon? And I'm like, that one doesn't scare me as much as the first one, saying, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's just it's a good continuation, but it will, will never have the same impact right, as right. seeing right. I mean, it's enjoyable. the first time. I but, actually still put it on my scary list yeah, just Jim. because Don Faster is such a, an incredibly creepy character. I don't think it made my scary list. <laughs> 
What are your other favorites? Uh, we briefly mentioned it, but first person shooter. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Not, it's funny, and also has a great part of the ending of Scully being the badass coming in to save Mulder. Which is great, because I mean, there's a lot of Mulder saving Scully, but having her come into the video game, especially since in the whole episode, him, the lone gunman, they're all being like so macho yeah. video gamers obsessed with it. Strong female presence to take out the other. Exactly. Strong female presence. Which yeah. is pretty cool. And yeah. actually, the girl that tri that ha her character, the stripper... Gay she, Blue Afterglow. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Can't um, forget that name. <laughs> the girl who invents that character and the character who seeps into this other game is currently playing Roz on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> if you watch that. Nope. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> it lost me. Um, um, he's I a huge Marvel fan. Yeah, yeah so. I'm obsessed with Marvel, but... I don't know if this is a good spot to bridge into least favorite. Well, no, because I didn't discuss I, oh, all you my didn't? favorite. No. Those are all the good ones. No, uh, that, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like, fair. I don't know how to say this one. Je Suet. Je Suet. Je Suet. Yeah, well, I did take French, sorry. <laughs> Monsieur Oliver, if you're listening, I apologize. I, <laughs> I kind of like that one. I don't know why, it just stays with me, because I thought it was amusing and kind of ironic justice that happens, sort of. And There's like, at least two things that are awesome moments for the characters in that episode that I love. Scully being so happy with this invisible body. Like, no. her yeah. genius of it. And then just Mulder's persistence that he can beat it. Like, yeah. I'm going to type the perfect wish that yes. you will not <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, I enjoy that one. It's not one of my... Well, it is... It's. It's, it's a good one. I like it, it but it's... It's enjoyable. Yeah. It's an enjoyable time. It was a really nice ending Monster of the Week episode for that season, mm -hmm. I think. And the woman who plays the Janiya or Genie is pretty charismatic, too. I like that one. It's yeah. not my... I didn't make my list, but I do enjoy watching that one. I also had a couple that we haven't mentioned. I have six... six the, Extinction 2, only 2. I don't actually... <laughs> you don't I, like the first part? I don't love the whole arc, to be honest with you. Finding the spaceship and the writing. I, I like what they were trying to do, which was to insert new conspiracy into it. But that, that arc gets convoluted very, very quickly. And But what I liked about Sixth Extinction is 2 is number one, we get the verification that Smoking Man is Mulder's father. He flat out, yeah. flat out says it. And then secondly, Mimi dies. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very satisfying, and I don't feel bad when it happens. <laughs> so well, guys, oh, oh. Yeah. Mimi Rogers. Rogers. Yeah, I'm like, who's your father? Got it, Diana. <laughs> yeah, Diana. Because when, when we were watching it, when my college roommate and I were watching that season, you know, back in the olden times of my college days, every time she came on the screen, it was, oh no, it's Mimi again. <laughs> that was our reaction. So when she died, I enjoyed it. And then finally, the other one that I love out of that season is Anna Mee. Which is when the smoking man tries to <laughs> woo Scully a little bit yes. for his own yeah, manipulative say, purposes. I, yeah, people kind of either love or hate that episode. Uh -huh. I really love that episode. I still love that episode. It's actually going to be on one of my just favorites list, but my favorite list is always changing. <laughs> I mean, it's really true. You know, William B. Davis did write that episode. He did. And I thought it was, I mean, again, you can see his personality in that episode. He's a very sweet person in real life outside of his character <laughs> but yeah i thought it was interesting to see that relationship take place other than it being Mulder and cancer man or cigarette smoking man i just and his his just the way he went about it the whole thing i mean like i said some people question his motives in the episode but i think ultimately it kind of comes together real well and it leaves an impression at least i felt that way clearly nick disagrees <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because it's a female thing. I don't know, but <laughs> no, no, I I totally agree with you. I I like the fact that his motives are in question by the end of the episode, but I think that was ultimately him trying to show that the smoking man does have some sort of human element to him that's beyond pure evil. It was very intelligent the way it was presented and. It's also really enjoyable just having him and Gillian Anderson together in scenes without Mulder. Yeah, 
Um, it was different, and it was really interesting to watch. And kind of classy, in yeah. a way. Very high-level mystery, which is what I liked about that one a lot. Well, so. right, because it's you like, why is he going to spell me now? Like, what is this <laughs> yeah, about? What is going <laughs> on here? The afternoon, the company was leaving and wanted to have another... No, I don't know. <laughs> Plus, it was a nice touch to like set him up in offices, and then she tries to show up, Mulder the offices, and then of course he's disappeared. They're long gone. There's right. nothing there. It was just really well done. It just didn't leave a lasting impression on me. Like I kind of even forgot it existed. Okay, Nick. <laughs> I'm with him. I don't remember it at all. To be honest, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm like, oh, that must have happened if they're saying that. Like, no, That's oddly specific what we're saying. <laughs> I know. Um, I don't think anyone's mentioned Hungry, and I know Nick doesn't like this episode. I do not like this It's my least favorite episode. Why do I like it? I don't, know. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that episode. I think it's definitely one of the weakest. Oh, Hillary's saying that. Come yes. on. <laughs> I like it that it's from his perspective. I think it's unique what they were trying to do. I mean, it, it's fr it, it's told from his point of view. It is. Mm -hmm. and I if like you, it in theory. If you, you had never, guy, but if you <laughs> had never watched X Files and didn't know anything about it, like you were from a household without electricity, and you turn it on, <laughs> and you were watching it, you probably would be like, "Why is this Duchovny guy just like following?" Like I don't know. I think it was cleverly done. I guess so. Ironically. It I only have one least favorite from the season, and that is the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think when I tell you mine, I'll shock you with that, too. Because You're going to shock us. I'm going to shock you. It's been listed among favorites already. But I'll keep it all favorites, so I don't want to skip any. Well, there's two I like that I think other like people not might not student. like. <laughs> Honorable I, mentions is what you're thinking? Yes. I like the two-parter. We find out kind of what happens with Samantha. Yeah, me too. What, what one? Oh, boy. Closure. Controversial. <laughs> oh. Yep. They're I towards my favorites closure. on the season. Closure, and I don't I remember the name of those. Zine, Zine and Zip. Zip. Zine and Zip. I don't know. I, I just, they, they give us closure on Samantha so many times. I mean, I know this is the definitive, but like. But yeah, it's like. I don't even know what <laughs> happened to her. You could, I can I have to go yeah. back and rewatch it though. It you doesn't never... clarify it. They yeah. don't now it's this oh no. The problem is that oh, you no. miss any of those other episodes or the problem was is that all those other episodes were then just you know red constantly... herrings. Yeah, yeah they're, red they're, herrings. They're, they're, they were and they're my little... directing molder. That's what it's all for. Right. It's ironic that she bring this one up because Hillary and I had an epic discussion on your this one. Okay. Only the sisters can have that sort yeah. of discussion. Yeah. About closure. Just that one episode. Just that one episode. <laughs> closure for me, I don't hate it. And I understand what they were trying to do, but I feel much the same way Sarah does. There was just too many characters giving him red earrings, like yeah. the alien bounty hunter and the well-manicured man, like people who... All the Samantha clones coming in. Yeah. This is what happened to me. Oh, wait, but no, that's not. Yeah, yeah. And then, I, I mean, yes, it all adds up. It is satisfying for his character. I think the reason why the episode works for me is because he reads from her journal. This is the moment, really, that sells it for me because we get to finally hear what are her own words, even though he's the one reading them. But the Starlight Children thing, while nice, it was just like... The oh. walk-ins, or yeah, the walk-ins. Oh yeah, is this the Santa one? And the... Mm -hmm. It starts off with that. Nobody shoots at Santa. See, I don't even know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I I just it, it's not listeners. It's not them. It's me. I yeah. I can't keep up. I really can't. Like I don't remember which was the actual truth. Like, as a person who's watched this, but not for like two years, probably mm -hmm. it was the last time I took a watch. Well, my the first time I watched it through too, like. I thought it was the whole Samantha clones like covered everything. Mm -hmm. I, I completely forgot that that was just a red herring. And so mm -hmm. when this episode came, I was like, "Well, wait!" I thought they already because mm -hmm. like, and also Mulder really hadn't even been brought in. Like him and Scully are so like at that point codependent. The last couple seasons that it's really not brought strong, Kyle. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's it's like it's not nearly brought up as the first season. So I just figured right. that he was already past it, and that you know that story was told. Right. Well, yeah. But clearly it was them trying to get... I, that was, as we talked about in our discussion, that was the last major mystery. Yeah. They had answered all of the other huge 
questions in previous episodes, in previous seasons, this is the one thing that drove Mulder from the pilot, was what happened to my sister. So they had to answer it. And I'm glad that they did. But it's not my favorite. Oh. <laughs> Since you just mentioned the pilot, I was about to say, I really liked Requiem, which revisited the pilot. Is that the season finale? Season seven, Requiem. Oh, I think yes. so. Yeah, they yeah. go back to the same Billy pilot. Idols. Just Billy nobody's Ma- mentioned that. I actually really like that. I do too. Mm. Plus, it has Cry Check. It does have Cry Check. <laughs> Is that the only one he's in in this season? Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Mm-hmm. He's not in the sixth extinction arc, mm-hmm. and he's not in the middle arc. So, yeah, I think. And Requiem then there's a lot of standalone, so yeah, it's. Yeah, it was very monster. All of the last three seasons are very heavy on the monster of the weeks. That kind of took us into least favorite of the yeah, season. It, with it covered mine. That was. Hillary, my did we get yours? Did we get all everyone? Yours? Yeah, everyone covered all of mine <laughs> from the season. So I just kind of added some little details, but. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, I could still go on and on about closure because again, it's another thing that either you love or you hate. I have but my I don't own. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this down for the final time. I'm never implying that you personally, Kylie, do hate it. I'm saying that though others had very strong reactions, like you keep joking about Lost, same kind of thing. People had a strong reaction so to it. So closure is Lost season six for the X. <laughs> A little bit, but yeah. Yeah, Yeah, was my strong reaction amnesia? Because I just don't even remember what happened. I mean, you do. You're just... It's hard to put it together. Uh, Yeah. And one of the things that we also talked about was because it started off with the story with the child Santa serial killer thing, for me it was it felt reminiscent of Paper Hearts. And Paper Hearts is way better. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. That's true. Way, way better. In fact, Paper Hearts makes my all-time favorite list. So I just... That's another reason why I had a problem with it, but neither here nor there. I do have another we one. We are that's... sisters, listeners. <laughs> so we have these discussions. I have another one that isn't my favorite. It's pretty low. Like Fight Club. Just oh, I don't gosh. I don't know if it's too much Kathy Griffin for me. No, I can dig that. Oh, I forgot about <laughs> I, that. It has some good moments in it, but it's still I I don't know. I forgot about that episode. Frankly, that made my least favorites of all time because, yes, too much Kathy Griffin. Mm. It's just a little <laughs> ridiculous. It's just, well, Kathy Griffin, like, she has no place being on the X Files. I don't know who <laughs> thought that made sense. <laughs> um, wow. Yes, sorry. Yeah, Kathy she's Griffin. such Kathy. a good actress, though. I don't I'm really <laughs> confused. This is sarcasm. Hashtag listeners. sorry, not sorry, Kathy Griffin. Um, <laughs> with that being said, yeah, I agree. It's just, it, do, it, and it doesn't really fool either so it's I'm, reminiscent of the season three one where the stars are aligning and everyone's hating each other yeah. yeah but that one's but more that clever one's even well, though Kylie yeah. hates the girls I like, hate the girls but more I like than the Kathy Griffin? yeah oh. no <laughs> not, actually no I forgot about this one I might have to revise my I mean, list in this on the episode, fly yeah. <laughs> solving the mystery of the horny beast so yeah. Yeah. there's no <laughs> <laughs> There's no cleverness going on, I don't think, as much with the no. Fight Club episodes. And it actually, the conceit might have been okay if it had been somebody besides Kathy Griffin. That's very possible. <laughs> I mean, the, the actor the actor who plays that poor guy in the episode. I, the wrestler? Yeah, the rest, He, I mean, he's good. I like him. But yeah, yeah, the, yeah she just throws it all off. I'm sorry. And there's two of her. And the <laughs> doppelgangers. <laughs> what? Two of them. As if that would ever happen. <laughs> I don't believe that. The truth is not out there on that one. <laughs> so. And my least favorite, season seven, and my least favorite of all of them be, is Millennium, because I'm a huge fan of the show Millennium. <laughs> and it gets everything wrong. Well, the problem is, and it's got a lot of the backstory of that episode, because it was supposed to be a standalone zombie episode, and Millennium got canceled, Like, and they decided... We need to turn this... They already had the script for it, and George Romero was supposed to direct it. And they're like, well, let's turn this into a closure for the series Millennium. Which in the show Millennium, the Millennium group is like this vast conspiracy, very powerful, like fingers and everything. And then in this, it's one crazy guy digging up bodies to turn into four zombies. And then they also turn the main character of Millennium into this kind of reluctant, doesn't want to be their sidekick. And it's just very insulting to anybody that actually watched the show Millennium. Although the end kiss with Mulder and Scully is a cute moment. 
I knew you would either love or hate that episode, and I don't really like it, so I'm glad that you validated my point of view. I don't hate it, but I was like, oh, Kyle's going to know what this means. Like, he's yeah. going to know if this is good or bad. So I, I like just want to say, for the listener's sake, that first, just to refresh you, Hillary and Kyle are married. As are Sarah and Nick are married. They're two separate couples, okay? <laughs> and while Kyle was ranting about the Millennium episode, which he's going to continue to rant about in a second, his wife, my sister, was going blah, blah, blah in the background. <laughs> I just, I mean, I get where he's coming from, but I feel like you're taking it too much to heart. Like, <laughs> like Well, okay, how would you like it if X-Files was canceled? And then this other show is saying, we're going to fix, we're going to, give it closure the way you wanted it and then ah! Smulder and Scully were side characters and they got everything about them okay, wrong okay here's the thing that wouldn't happen with the X-Files because people <laughs> watched it okay. <laughs> you don't have to insult me anymore. oh ouch <laughs> the other thing is that I mean I get where you're coming from but I, I think that the things that you're saying they try to do to it I don't think that they try to do anything they're, they're, it came about for various reasons and I get what you're saying. If it was just a regular standalone episode, it would be better for you. But, I mean, I still don't think it's a terrible episode. But if you don't like it, that's okay. I'm just... I just don't think they should have even bothered shoehorning Millennium into it. Because I think it would have been just a fine standalone episode without Frank Black. Without mentioning... If, just saying the guy was working... On, it was just a necromancer working by himself. Saying the Millennium Group angle and all that, it was, it was completely unnecessary to the episode. And it certainly didn't actually give closure to the fans of Millennium. So it just accomplished nothing. So I just, it, it was just pointless to me. I mean, to me, there's variances between X-Files and the Lone Gunman show, and that doesn't necessarily mean that one is worse than the other. They just, that's what they did. It was Fox. They made that decision. But, I mean, ultimately, to me, it's 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 still okay. It's still incorporating. I mean, they could have just said, okay, screw you, Millennium. We're not going to give you anything. Well, the... The way the third season ended would have been better than that, I, I feel like. So the other thing that I asked Kyle was, which did it bother you more that George Romero was yanked as the episode director or that it was Millennium? Uh, that it was Millennium. Because it, it, it was originally supposed to set out as a semi-remake of Night of the Living Dead. They had a script. And Night of the Living Dead, the way they pitched it was Night of the Living Dead with Mulder and Scully. So it was going to be them trapped in a farmhouse, zombies and everything. No Millennium, no end of the world, just... Which would have been a great standalone episode and would have been amazing as an homage to Night of the Living Dead, which that probably would have ended up being my favorite episode ever. But George Romero and Fox got in a disagreement over because they were supposed to make a movie together, and so he it fell through and he didn't want to direct the episode, and then he didn't want it to be too similar to Night of the Living Dead. So they just took the script that they already had, because they're already getting close to filming it, as that close. And they literally like, okay, well, there's a couple beats we have to fill in if we can't be that close to Night of the Living Dead. And so they just quickly, literally just wedged Millennium into an episode that was already written and done. So it just doesn't fit. Well, I, what I can say for Millennium, the episode, is I do enjoy the moment when the new year turns. Yes, that episode, is, that moment is, that's the thing that bothers me. Because, like, everything before that bothers me, but that, and the moment in the hospital with Millennium Skull there, just, like, their first kiss, but it's not a big deal. It's just a cute, great moment. I love that. And the world didn't Well, then maybe that's yeah. the part you should focus on. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'll say not knowing any of that, not watching Millennium, I, I still enjoy think, it. Yeah, I think it's a great yeah. episode, actually. And yeah, I, like, as I, a fan of Millennium, it's just insulting. If I had never seen an episode of Millennium, it would be a fine standalone episode. <laughs> All, right. All right, Millennium ran over. And I also, we didn't mention this, but I also still like, I don't know how many other people like it, but I still think the Amazing Millennium episode is cute. I, um, I like that one. Yeah, I like that episode. It's cute. It's not my favorite. I, it's, yeah, I, I, I didn't I mean, like that episode. Okay. Um, <laughs> I did. I just think the little moments in it were cute. I didn't say that earlier. I just realized I had forgotten it. But if anybody else likes that episode, hey! <laughs> so the amazing Malini is the magicians, and the yes. one magician particularly trying to go out with a the most stupendous trick of all time, essentially. Illusion, I'm sorry. most stupendous <laughs> illusion of all time. Which became... Various types of movies later. <laughs> That's true. Any other thoughts that we had on your favorites or least favorite episodes from season seven? My least favorite is first person shooter. Oh no. What? <laughs> I don't like it that much either. Yeah, that's right. Nick doesn't like it that much either. <laughs> I like it. I like, I like it a lot. I like it a lot as well. <laughs> Baby, again, it's genetics. 
I will maybe. <laughs> I actually think it's pretty clever. What don't you like about it? Yeah. <laughs> Execution. Boring. I, I just boring. I'm bored through it. Boring. So bored. I don't Blah. have anything intelligent to say about why, except it doesn't. I'll just wait till we get to in. season nine. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling that that portion of the discussion is going to be short. Yeah. On one front. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think overall, like I said earlier, it's still a pretty good season. It is Considering good. for most dramas that season seven, they are definitely wavering. That's true. It did finish, finish, quotes, in quotes, uh, David Duchovny's time as main series regular very well, I think. But then we moved into season eight. <laughs> so at this point in season eight, we'll segue into that. Mr. Duchovny goes to a part-time regular status. He's still <laughs> featured in the main credits when he's there. It starts off with his abduction, which began in Requiem, the seventh season finale. And then uh, he was on a spaceship for the first half of the season. And A.D. Kirsch comes back, assistant director Kirsch, played by James Pickens Jr., who... Some people now might know Chief him Weber. anatomy, right? And he's just a mean guy. Uh, we don't <laughs> like him. He's not very nice. The character, not the actor. The, no, character. Say, the character is wonderful, but yeah, definitely um, one of the not liked characters. I think everyone can agree. That's yes. the genius <laughs> of his acting. Yeah, it does. indeed. He's a great actor. You like him on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, he, yeah. So, A.D. Kirsch assigns John Doggett, played by none other than the T-1000 himself, Robert Patrick, although he's done many things since, but he's probably most famous for that, as John Doggett, who is now Scully's partner on the X-Files, and his main task is to find Mulder. That's why he's assigned to the X-Files. And at this point in the series, Scully has become less of a skeptic and more of a believer, but sort of in an empirical way, because she still likes her science. And Doggett is a hardcore skeptic. He was a cop. He's very um, gruff. Very gruff, very by the book, to the point. We find out that he had a son who was kidnapped and murdered. He was murdered? Yeah. A spoiler. (laughs) But he still has those piercing eyes. He kept, he maintained. Yes. I'll get those. He does have piercing eyes. Beautiful piercing eyes. (laughs) But I was joking, but I, clarification. Do we know his son was murdered or just kidnapped? At when we first, like, that arc is brought in. I mean, I think that's confirmed in yeah, the season nine episode. Con- yeah, he's yeah. murdered. Oh, yeah. in season nine. Okay. Yeah. It's confirmed that we learned that later in season nine, although it was investigated as a murder, and they cover that in season eight, in the episode where they actually introduce Monica Reyes, which we'll get to in a second, because she actually yay. comes in in season eight. <laughs> that was a sarcastic yay. Yeah. We'll get to her in a second. She's delightful. We like her. <laughs> Oh, boy. There's going to be a lot of discussion about this. So let's talk about Season 8 first. What did we think about Season 8 as a a whole? This is the season that lost me when I was watching. All right. It did not lose me. There's some episodes that aren't as good a quality. Uh, There's episodes that, like, Patience is, in theory, a perfect episode of X-Files, but it just feels a little off, and I think it's because you're missing those molder moments but like that's a pretty good idea for an x-file and it pretty well executed it just it's not quite there i still enjoy the episode but it's sad but i think the x-files you know needs more there (laughs) or david to come yeah i'd agree with nick that even though the season i still agree is pretty good what made the ambiance of the show obviously is Mulder and his character and yes he does come back later in ways but yeah it feels like a little piece of your heart (laughs) is somewhere off in the yonder and it should it it, yeah it feels like it's not quite there and at first everyone poor poor robert patrick who's a brilliant actor everyone was yeah he does a great job yeah everyone at first was so reluctant even like people who have loved everything he's done they're like who is he to come into the x-files and (laughs) I think, yeah, he did a really good job with it, and eventually he won people's hearts he over. Did. His he introduction is a little rough, but yeah. you grow to like him, and you, you grow to like the character, too. Mm-hmm. That and is I, what lost me. Like, I, I love him in it, and I do like those episodes, but I'll go into what lost me when we talk about least favorite episodes. I just want to clarify that it isn't just that Mulder's gone. 
I think the X Files is the Mulder Scully relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to say, oh, without Mulder, the show's nothing. Without Mulder or Scully, the show's nothing. It needs both of them. Yeah. Well, and it's important. It's important that you say that because at the time, you know, for a while, Chris Carter was afraid the show was going to be canceled. Then oh. all of a sudden, Fox was like, oh no, we're going to keep running it because it's one of our cash cows. Yes. But Duchovny was having a disagreement both with Chris Carter and with Fox separately and together. <laughs> And so, to solve this problem, you know, at the time, Chris Carter was advocating, and he was saying, oh no, the X-Files can totally run on for 10 more years, 20 more years, because it's all about the cases they investigate. It's not about who investigates them. An interesting theory. An interesting yeah. theory that clearly was not proven, because... Reminds me a little of George Lucas in that way, where he doesn't quite understand what his own fans see in his show. Correct. Exactly. And that, I think the reason why The X-Files primarily was so successful is that not only did it tap into something with its stories, but it tapped into something with two characters that are just so rich and so... <laughs> Jack agrees. So rich and so involved with each other, and there's, there's passion with on both character sides. Like, Mulder has this very clear passion for the truth and the paranormal, but Scully is also passionate. She's passionate for her science, and she's passionate for, you know, being able to work with Mulder. She follows him, and I think it's, it's love for her from a, for a very long time, and I don't think that the X-Files would be nearly what it was without those two, yeah. and then to try to bring in what are consummate to replacements just wasn't going yeah. to work. Like, the Mulder and Scully dynamic, like, that's capturing light in a bottle, because it's like the exactly. actors, the characters, like, it all perfectly came together, and just Great thinking you can just slap two actors together and think that they're going to just be as interesting or play off each other as well is naive. Very naive. I think they tried to flip it and make it so that now Doggett was more skeptical and Scully was more the believer. The believer. Mm -hmm. And I think that they tried and they made a valiant effort, but it's hard to know. I don't think it truly landed the way they wanted it to. The best shot they would have had, I think, would have been more lone gunmen to make up for the loss. <laughs> more lone gunmen and Skinner, stuff that we already established. Used to. Yep. But not only did they not do that, we have less lone gunmen because they were off doing their Long farcical show. comedy type <laughs> things. Yeah, in my opinion, that's the only way x could have lasted without having Mulder and Scully in every episode of the season is bringing in more... <laughs> Staples. And we also lacked, I mean, Smoking Man did not appear in season eight. Crycheck didn't appear till the end. You don't see no. any of those characters. The one common character, a unifying character, is assistant director Kirsch, aside from Skinner, because obviously Skinner, Mitch Pileggi, not in season eight, in season nine becomes regular, but they feature him pretty heavily in season eight. And it's just not, it's not the same. He's not, he's a villain and he's dislikable, unlikable, but he's not smoking man, you know? He's not iconic. He's not iconic. He's not the syndicate. I just kept waiting for him to redeem himself. Oh, I bet he's going to be good secretly now. No, you had no. to wait a couple seasons. You had to wait him. a long time for that yeah. payoff. And then it was really anti-climate. Yeah, I was going to say, and then it's like, well, okay, he's kind of less dickish. <laughs> <laughs> And really, it came in the last ten minutes of the series finale, so... Yeah. We'll talk about that when we talk about season nine in a few minutes. We'll talk about season eight. Which ones did you like? Which ones didn't you like? I like... I'm assuming we're starting with like. I feel like we usually do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that starts us on a good... Bit. I like Red <laughs> Rum a lot. Oh. <laughs> what? Gosh! <laughs> Listeners, you need to write in. I'm going to get fired from this place. <laughs> You won't get fired, but... It's opinion. It's, it's subjective. Opinion. So you guys don't like red rum? I thought everyone was going to be like, oh, yeah, Sarah, you finally got it right. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not one of my favorites of all time, but I still like it. Why don't, why don't you like it? I don't like it because I find it very tedious. I feel oh. like it could have, it could have worked, but for two Two primary reasons. One being we get introduced to this character from his perspective and have no idea who the hell he is, number one. Number two, it capped off with this really clunky monologue that came from him that was all pedantic and basically, 
I don't know. It, 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 it's something that really could have worked, and I feel like it just didn't. It failed. Kind of like other ones that we were talking about earlier. It, it has that same... I, I enjoy that episode, but it still has that same, like, there's just something missing where it doesn't quite... It's like Duchovny being gone was harder to deal with than when they moved the whole thing from Vancouver to L.A. Like, that was harder for everyone to just get the gears meshing. So even the ones I really like in this season are still, still have well. that just oh. a little off. And even the ones that I, that I remember really enjoying... I feel like, are, like this is not happening. I really like, and I feel like maybe it's because this is the first time. Maybe they are killing off Mulder. They certainly could. He's not a cast member anymore. Like that's why it got me to like it. I don't know if that if it will have the longevity that the other seasons, some of those episodes will of my favorites. But that, uh, yeah, this this season just it has good ideas. It has some good writing, and it it just isn't quite X Filesy. Enough. I was gonna say that I, I still like I found myself in a state where because like I would pretty much force my family to watch it whether they wanted to or not. But every every week I just kept feeling like I was just waiting for yeah that anticipation for Mulder to be back in whatever state that was. I just started be not that I you know like I said I still really liked that and I of course still love Scully. But yeah, it was just that more, I just I couldn't help it. I just there was always that that just that hope, the anticipation that he would come back. And there were some episodes. I feel like there was a lot of mythology this season, more so than the others, just because they were focused around that aspect of Mulder coming back from his abduction. And Nick mentioned this is not happening. That is one of my favorite episodes for sure, just because you are seeing the pain and struggle that Scully has to go through, just wanting the answers, just wanting him to be there. But yeah, again, I kind of feel everything felt a little bit off, and as a result of that, I just kept wanting. I was like, when is he going to be back? <laughs> kind of feeling. I think that's totally yeah. fair. I, I think even now when I've done the rewatching for this podcast, I've probably been through the series total three or four times maximum. And I have that same feeling every time I watch season eight. Like when are the Mulder episodes going to come? All of my favorite episodes from season eight are mythology episodes that are centered around Mulder. See, and <laughs> that's actually one of the things that lost me is like you watch season eight waiting for Mulder, but then you get to the Mulder episodes and like they cram a lot of mythology into just like the four episodes where he comes back and spoilers, but like in like three episodes he comes back, he dies. He gets brought back to life. He's a super soldier. They cure him. It's just he a lot. He make it to super soldier. No, he doesn't. Well, I know. They, they miraculously heal him. But it just feels like 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 we have to company for these episodes. Let's cram as much as we can and then go back to, like, standalones. And it, there's that block, I think it's, like, episode 13 through 15 or something. And it's just so much mythology because you can just tell, like, we have Duchovny. Let's just get it all in while we can. But then at the same time, you almost feel a little bit better, though, because you're like, wait a minute, yes, the cosmos have kind of fallen a little bit more into place because he's, he's back. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just wish they wouldn't have crammed so much into it. Like, I know they wanted, while well, he was back, to get what they could into it, but I just feel like they tried to just shove way too much into his return. Favorite episodes? Mine was Existence, which I think is the finale. I have um, that one. Crychek's death I thought was fitting, mostly because, like, as we said, I said before, I love Skinner, <laughs> and then the crap that Crychek put him through, and him being a hero, and it just, it was fitting. On the end of that episode, with I think it's Mulder and Scully in the road with William, I felt like... It would have been a good end to Mulder and Scully's relationship. But then knowing, coming back, that Dave Duchovny wasn't going to be like in the ninth season at all, you're like, okay, this is great, but you know it's not going to end there because Scully's going to be in season nine without him. Right. So this is a very great moment, but you know it's not going to last. Well, and I think they handled that continuity okay. We'll talk about that in a second. I had existence on my list as well. For all those reasons, I thought the... The Crycheck death, whether you wanted him to die or not, mm -hmm. was a pretty, really, an excellent death, as deaths go. I think if Nicholas, if I were Nicholas Lee, I would 
totally relish that. <laughs> Actually, and a lot did. of it, I was going to say, we because we, we, like I said, we went to a convention. Nicholas Lee was there. We went to his panel with a couple other television actors. And that's basically what he said. He wanted to go out with a bang, <laughs> which became... You know, very literal. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he said he was very happy. Because, like, there was a panel with a bunch of characters from different TV shows that died from, like, Prison Break and Heroes. And somebody asked them if they were happy with their character arc. And he was. He said he went out at the right time. And it was perfect. And how he went out was exactly how he would have written it if he had the choice. If you have the DVDs, make sure to watch the, the promos are on there. And it is just the perfect... For that episode where he dies, it's one of these characters will die, and they show you a, a bunch that no, they're probably not going to be telling those. Uh, it, it's very fun. It's to travel back into that and Fox I'm trying to milk that. that as much as he could. This isn't a favorite episode of season eight, but I just want to remind everyone that we actually get something we've always wanted in the X Files. I think it happens a thousand times where Scully just misses it and doesn't believe. But season eight, she's a believer. Yeah. And I guess that isn't enough to satisfy people throughout the whole season, but it is awesome, all, and all of those moments where she is trying to fill the Mulder role. Well, I think somebody must bring up the best episode of this season, which is Alone. <laughs> Another salamander guy? I love it. I love it. Season nine, isn't it? No. Alone is in season eight. Le- okay. This is the first Layla. Here's oh it. no! Are you sure it's not? I'm season pretty nine? sure it's season eight. It's, it's episode okay. nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> They're all bleeding together yeah. now. Close to the end of season eight. Jolie Jenkins mm-hmm. joins us for one episode. She comes back later. Mm-hmm. Everyone's speechless because they just know that this time I've hit them on the head. It's uh, we see the Apollo Eleven medal that oh. Mueller gives Scully. We see the dime yeah. penny that. They don't know why. Scully doesn't know why she still has because she doesn't hate remember. It. I yeah. don't hate that. I don't either, but it's literally the second time we see someone who's like has salamander DNA within yeah. him. <laughs> Is that the episode where Scully gives that Smolder's medal to Doggett? No, she goes on maternity leave. Doesn't she give yeah. it to Layla? Yeah. No, 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 no she, she gives starts, it to Doggett. Yeah, she starts oh, off. And it just felt Doggett. weird to me. <laughs> Well, and like, then Doggett drops it, and then Mulder picks it up and sa- Scal- calls Scully and says, You re gifted. Um, or, I, or I just think it's probably people do have salamander DNA, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's very common in this universe, and it needs to be addressed. I just liked it. I thought it was goofy and fun, and I thought she was goofy and fun. And it seemed like the kind of crazy FBI thing like, Oh, she's in accounting, but she wants that job, so hey. Well, I don't know why she fangirled a little bit. She fangirled over Mulder and Scully. Yeah. That's kind of funny. And who wouldn't do that? Right? <laughs> I mean, she's processed all their travel vouchers and things. I so. mean, she just is trying really hard, and there are people in the world that just try really hard. And then she yeah. realizes at the end, I better not do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. I so mean, it's a good lesson learning Yeah, experience. it's a good life lesson. Yep. I mean, yeah. It's not my favorite, but I don't hate it. So there you go. Well, I guess I'll have to take it. <laughs> yep, yep. I think that's how I would sum up season eight. Yeah. It's my favorite, but I don't hate yeah. it. I actually really enjoyed Per Manum, which is the episode where Mulder comes back before he really comes back, but in flashback, and they're talking about her trying to conceive with that one vial of ova that he found in that government warehouse. He's so sweet. I know. Can, I, can you refresh me? He is the father of her baby. Or we don't know. Or what? What's the See, thing? that's what... See, well, I can't... And, and I want to believe they... Because Carter wanted to establish that it is Mulder. Is, when he says, they're okay. laying in bed together and he says, yeah. are you missing Wait. our son? Yes. yes. And that's what I keep remembering. Because people were confused by the end of the series, too, and so they wanted to put that... Okay. Bit in there to say well, yes, William kind of is their child. But nobody, they didn't really say it outwardly, and I think that's what people needed. Yeah, <laughs> like just say it. Uh, Listen, a third Scully, a third Molar, and a third extraterrestrial. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, they also <laughs> discuss it briefly in the second film too, because this is the last. There's still. A lot, 
I still have questions, and we can kind of, I guess, hedge into this a little bit. We'll still talk about season eight, but one of my questions off the series, well, I only have two. One, where is William nowadays in life? Oh, and, well, oh season ten. Coming. Se- oh, <laughs> season ten, the comic that Chris Carter wrote <laughs> says that uh, they make sure he gets adopted by a Christian family. Who gets, him from right? Right? who gets murdered? Who gets murdered? He's and still then they, alien. <laughs> uh, didn't Spender fix him? When? The, the, when the, he was all bandaged up the and they didn't know who it was? Episode? Yeah, didn't he cure him of all the powers and the weirdness? I don't see that. That's so Jeffrey. confusing. It was Jeffrey, right? Yeah, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. This, this is uncle. season nine that we're... T- yes, his uncle. This is his half uncle yeah. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I so I was... He, I was... Yeah, he was like a normal baby after that, I thought. <laughs> I don't really? think that that was established so at all. Because I don't think they'd have to get rid of them. I mean, I think maybe there was an attempt, but I don't think... I thought that. that, but then again, I think a lot of things. I don't yeah. ever seem to know what's going on. I mean, I, and he's still going to be part alien. There's this whole bit about he has powers. When he cries, the UFO comes alive. I mean, all this other stuff. So that's one. And then two, I think he's going to be that he's also Mulder's father. Did he get this alien genetics from Mulder? Because Mulder had part of the genetics from when he got the virus in Russia, and then that was taken out of his brain, but it wasn't fully taken out of his brain, because then the UFO took him. You see what happens on the X-Files? I'm going to say yes. Okay. Because that's what I want it to be. So okay. there you go. Well, there you go. I, I want it to be, Mulder. I want Mulder to be William's father as well, and they certainly talk about it that way, but it's just, there's... That was my main residual question after the series, I and mean, still is. It's just that his name is William, because of the reasons why. Yes, well, that's true. So, have we covered everybody's favorites from season eight, such as they are? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only other one that I I would mention that hasn't been mentioned yet, Kyle mentioned them, but in the point of it losing them, I actually did enjoy Dead Alive in Three Words. Which is when Mulder dies, comes back to life. <laughs> Mainly because of the Scully release. So for the same reason that closure is effective for some people, Scully has spent this very emotional first half of the season trying to find Mulder. And I think that his return was handled very well. And, and like a lot of people can feel... Sorry, I need to just skip, no, jump in. But a lot of people feel for Mulder because they journeyed with ah! the whole time. You journey with Scully. It was in a shortened period, but still, that was a huge thing, huge part of her life, gone. So yes, to have that sort of, yeah, you're you're watching it with her, but you're experiencing it with her, and then when it comes, you have almost the same reaction she does. So I agree. I like those episodes as well. Even though they may have crammed in a lot, but what are you going to do? What the, are you going to do? The, the, the <laughs> yeah, it's like they, they kind of had to. I'm not saying, you know, that's just where it lost me just on a personal basis. This is basis. where they're we're going to really, like, you, Fox Network. Yeah, they're not really bad lives. episodes. Although I, you're reviving the series, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> After all that drama. I know, right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I do Hashtag, like... Hashtag, told you so. <laughs> I don't know why I like it. Maybe just because it's a callback to Jose Chung's from Outer Space. But the episode, This Is Not Happening, that's a phrase repeated many times. Yep. It is weird that that's more of a comedic episode, and it's an awesome feeling, but it's like Scully at her worst. Yeah, Scully at her worst. As I said, you're feeling the pain in uh-huh. that episode. I, I was feeling the pain. I was too, but then I was also like, yeah, that reminds me of that other episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took you so out it took me out, but I was happy about how it took me out. I would also just like to say that the music Mark Snow wrote to go along with that episode was very haunting. Mm-hmm. Scully uh, song. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, to me, just the music alone set a very vivid tone for that episode. That could be because I'm a music person, but it still, it, it took me in right away. So, yeah, I like that episode, too. And Jack agrees. <laughs> yeah. I can tell. Mm-hmm. Really he agrees a lot this mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a very smart baby. <laughs> very smart junior podcast. <laughs> he's part of William. <laughs> That's what happened to William. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Crazy. Do, 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 do. Mind blown. <laughs> what are your least favorite episodes? Roadrunners. Sorry, I didn't let you finish the sentence. I don't know why. I just don't what even. What are your it. least favorite episodes from season eight? <laughs> <laughs> Nick says Roadrunners. That was I don't not mind. my least favorite. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. No, well, I, I thought you it. said you even liked it. I just, well, I probably bored. did. It was boring. I was bored by it. Oh, really? I actually have that on my scary list just because the thought is appalling. <laughs> so the thought of 
having something crawling up your back and then worshiping it like a god yeah. is truly scary. <laughs> is that the episode? Is that yeah. is Rusty Schwimmer? Is she the lady? The bus driver? I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't know who Rusty Schwimmer is. Well, you should Google her. She's amazing. There you go. I don't like, and some people really like this episode, but it's on my least favorites of all time. Mm -hmm. and that's Bad Lab. Yes! <laughs> me too. Sorry. Poop sorry. Yeah, but, boy, uh, me. You are a good little boy. person actor, but like that episode's terrible. It's disgusting. Yeah, a it's, monster of the week that crawls up people's butts. And, like, 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 this is when he's on his final card. card. He's on a regular he's card. Like, you hear the card <laughs> coming, and he's just. Oh, God, I hate it. it. Yes, I mean, that made a number of my lists as well. What? <laughs> Nick, you don't like that one either, do you? I don't hate it as... Oh, the, John Shannon. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> you it's have so many great episodes. It is like, a perfect moment of, like, horror movie that they really get the squeaky wheel. Like, it does Okay, so do it, well. it does but, invoke some emotion and you, like, are like... But the oh payoff is so terrible. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. disgusting. Well, I agree. And it's, it's... I know this is the X-Files, but it... It's really hard for me to, like, suspend my disbelief about... Wait, huh? How long was he making this corpse move? I don't... Uh, it's weird to me. That might be my least favorite of all time, I believe, yeah, is what I... Me too. I, 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 it's on my least favorite list. No, but I dislike Roadrunners more. Really? I disagree. <laughs> I do too. That is wrong. <laughs> If you do not know the definition of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that next time you say the same thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it. getting spicy. <laughs> 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 the X Files. Wow. Again, always creating very intense discussion. Thought provoking. <laughs> so bad law, you don't like bad law. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I mean, any mm -hmm. other least favorites for you? Oh, that's really the only one that stands yeah, out. Yeah, I was going to say, Bad Law is pretty much the only one on my list just because it's just, I hate it. I had both Bad Law and Red Rum because that's how much I don't like yeah. Red Rum. But I, I hate Bad Law way more. Red Rum was at least a good story. I, I don't, didn't care for Vienna. It's probably my least favorite Black Oil episode. Oh, yeah, for when sure. on the oil rig. But it is nice to see Mulder and Doggett trying to work together. Oh, but yeah. Try. Fox and Doggett. <laughs> It was interesting. I mean, yeah. There's there's almost really a jealous boy. Yeah, there's yeah. almost a jealous boyfriend vibe about Mulder in that episode. <laughs> well, he's like, you've come in, you've kind of taken over some of my territory. What's going on here? Yeah. And he's Doggett's just kind of Doggett, and he's like, what's your damage? Yeah. <laughs> but it also I'm feels like the X Files. Dude. <laughs> Sorry, you you were abducted, you guy. <laughs> I'm just here because they made me be here, and yeah. I was trying to find you. It feels like a monster of a week that they didn't have a monster for, so they were like, uh, black oil. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I guess, my main problem with it. Oh, no, I agree that that's problematic, especially since this becomes the last time we actually see the black oil. And it hasn't been around for a little bit yeah. Yeah. until that point. And they so don't they discuss like, it oh, again until the series yeah, yeah, They're like, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. And since we're kind of nearing an endish point, let's just throw the black oil in there again. Yeah, oh. By the way, if you didn't already know, an alien virus, black oil. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it's super important. Yeah, it's like so important in the, early, in the movie especially, and then the first movie. The, the first movie, movie, Fight the movie. Future. Yeah. I also see a correlation between the black oil and the Daleks. It's like you can't ever get rid of it. <laughs> they just keep coming back, right, Kim? Oh, yes. By the way, if listeners and other panelists, if you didn't already know, Sarah and Nick are on our Doctor Who podcast panel, and Sarah has some very strong feelings about having to see the Daleks so much. <laughs> <laughs> they just never go away. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you do. You can solve it. Oh, see, they, they the they've they've wiped universe. out the entire Daleks like five um, times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so anyway, that's how I feel about the black because oil. Really it just I have it. strong I opinions about this as well, but it <laughs> seems like a tangent. Well, now let's segue into what what is officially the final season of the series, season nine. At this point, David Duchovny has left the series, kind of, sort of, officially, although he does come back for the series finale. It becomes Gillian Anderson again leading the crowd, although even she is spending a little less time on the series. Her character is reassigned off the X-Files because she has the baby, William, and she is teaching out of Quantico, the FBI's training academy. 
while John Doggett and Monica Reyes, played by Annabeth Gish, is assigned to be his partner. She's introduced in season eight and is an acquaintance of Doggett. She helped to investigate the case in which Doggett's son's kidnapping and murder was investigated, so they met before. There seems to be a little something-something that brews between those two characters as well throughout Season 9. But Season 9 is pretty much your denouement of the X-Files. It is the ending series. There's a lot of Monsters of the Week episodes. And I have a feeling we're going to have a variety of but overlapping opinions about this series, or this season, I keep doing the British thing now, <laughs> this season as well. So what did we think of season nine? I'll start off by saying black. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I accept Daggett and Scully. Mm -hmm. Their partnership worked, ended up working against all odds. But I do not like Reyes. Most people don't. I'm one of them. I'm with you. Yeah, I don't like Reyes Rude. either. Rude. I I don't like Annabeth Gish really at all. <gasps> Sorry! I, did you see Mystic Pizza? Should we w watch yeah. it real quick? <laughs> I don't want to watch it again. Um, <laughs> oh! Sorry! I've never seen it. What? <laughs> Hillary and Sarah disagree on Mystic Pizza. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want then. I apologize. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I feel like they were just trying too hard with her. I think they should have just left it the two of them. I felt like a lot of those episodes would have been better without her there. They were trying to make her more. Trying she's too just, hard. She's trying too hard. And she does like a really... I feel like she just does a bad job at times. Like she's just... Like even her pensive face is just so ridiculous to me. It just... <laughs> I want a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> she delivered Scully's baby. Like, I actually that did. That doesn't mean that, that she was meant. That, that was yeah. Baby, that was there to that be. That was very nice of her. You don't know her life. To be to be fair, I didn't mind her two episodes or three in season eight, but yeah, when she, she became season nine all the time, then it was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. They gave her nothing to do. When she did have stuff to do, she didn't do it well. <laughs> Basically comes down to it. And she really didn't have very much chemistry with Doggett at all. I know that Robert Patrick has gone on record to say, you know, we weren't trying to reproduce the Mulder Scully chemistry, and that's fair. They shouldn't have. But they didn't find any chemistry between the two of them at all. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's nothing to like make their working relationship as interesting. No, not at all. And even though even though they had this history, they did so little to flesh it out, except for this one footnote episode in like the last three or four of the series. That Aubrey one. Uh, I thought you were talking about Ar Audrey, Aubrey, Aubrey, Audrey Polly. Aubrey is an earlier. Year. I'm thinking of Audrey Polly. Is that the one you're thinking of? Where she's in the little tiny thing hospital, and she's in the car accident, and hello. Oh, no, release is the one where they address Doggett's son. son. Where the I thought you were talking about the one that's where the one where the passing from like person to person, and they think it had something to do with his son being murdered. Like why the person murdered his son, right? No, you're thinking. It blurs of, for me. Demonicus is the one where we see the fiery guy. I think yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Where they. I thought you were talking about their relationship getting resolved, and I think Audrey Polly does it, oh, where yeah, she's in the do. coma, and then he's like trying to communicate with her. She's You're in that little right about that there. little hospital thing, and then like it's the lady that I liked from earlier. What's her name? Playing a different character. Playing a different character, she, but they did that a lot. <laughs> yeah, they did do that yeah. a lot. They did it especially for her though, because she had two pretty big roles. But Sarah likes Reyes. I like Reyes. And Nick mm -hmm. likes Reyes. I like Reyes a little You're the only two people I've ever met yeah, say me that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't know very many people, do you? Well, I mean, most people consider the reason it was canceled. No. <laughs> no. no. I think longevity also had a lot to do with that. And there was declining viewership, but there was declining viewership before Reyes, yeah. too. So I, I dare to ask the question, are there any favorites that you have from yeah. season 9? Hellbound, I believe, where um, people are getting skinned alive. That made my girls That's your least episode. favorite, isn't it? I love that episode. Oh. Okay, I that's my least song. favorite. <laughs> I think it's well written. I think it's a good, like, x file yeah, thing. Yeah, it does feel like an x file episode. And it's yeah. a little race-centric. My favorite is The Truth, just because it's Mulder, Scully, you know... 
As series, I also have truth. As series finales go, that is one of the best ones. I think they did a really nice job of tying up all the loose ends. And finding, like, well, like even people who had passed from the show and getting them in there, but not in a overly... Ham-fisted yes. Way. Well, how do you feel about how, like, Mulder was just seeing these dead people? Like, was that it was better than trying to care because you got to see the actor. Well, and you got to see the one gunman. And they set up the fact, first of all, that they were trying to brainwash him into confessing. So I, I think you could make the leap that that addled his brain somewhat, mm-hmm. and he was able to see people like X and like Crichton. People who contributed to like his journey throughout. Right. Help him. Mentally, I was just curious what you guys thought. That's not my favorite episode, but I like. I mean, I enjoy it. I think it does a good job. I per- sorry. I particularly like it coming full circle in the scene at the end. That's how it starts. Yeah, um, me too. The, the I mirror mean, from the pilot in the hotel room. Is correct. What we're about. Correct. And again, their chemistry, their connection, their heartfelt conversation. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, that's the best thing for me is when things come full circle. And that's what you want to see. That's what you want to actually experience. Because I'd say that everybody gets pretty invested with these shows. So, I mean, that's... that's after the, nine years. Yeah, after nine years. Yeah, that's definitely the experience that you want to get. So, just for that moment alone, I would put that towards the top of my list for sure. I also appreciated... I didn't appreciate the trial, per se, in terms of... You know, clearly it was a kangaroo court, but I yeah. liked all the the different witnesses they called to the stand. I liked the fact, even though he came back in William, I liked the fact that they brought Jeffrey Spender back in, and he was able to acknowledge some of those truths, like, yes, we're half-brothers. You know, yes, my father did this, 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 and then he shot me. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. I always liked Jeffrey Spender. I, maybe just because I really think the actor is really good. Chris Owens does a lot of I like stuff. Jeffrey Spender. You like the character, Jeffrey Spender. Yes. All right. I don't mind Jeffrey Yeah, I don't like Jeffrey Spender, yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> what? he's supposed to come off as, you know, you're not, I don't think you're supposed to love him at first, but ultimately he comes around. He redeems. He redeems, yeah. He and gets his. That's true, too. <laughs> Maybe more than he deserves. Yeah, yeah. Ways. yeah. So my some of my favorites, I feel like people are just gonna laugh at me as usual or think I'm dumb. But I thought you were dumb. I really like Jump the Shark, the long gun and cap off. Yeah. Sorry, I really like it. Everyone else hates it. That's fine. I don't, I don't hate it. I don't dislike the episode. I hate that they killed the long yeah. gun. I, I was say the off screen death ambiguous. of beloved characters, like people who've been there for Scully and Mulder since season. Oh, they appeared in season one, didn't they, in one episode? Yes. But they've been there the whole time. And mm-hmm. and there's a reason it's off screen because they wanted, they originally, the the, they wanted the possibility of bringing them back. Which they are. Which they are. <laughs> they are. I just love that last shot where but, they know they're in there and they know they can be heroes. They are heroes. They are heroes. And they know that this is their chance to just finish it. And then that Polaroid shot of them, where you see that there's like a little window, right? And yeah. I just think that, I don't know, I thought that was very... They're buried in Arlington. Mm-hmm. I yes. thought it was well done. I, I, I like Boris Fletcher coming mm-hmm. back as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I know he was on Alone Gunman, but I like when he starts those narrations and he makes his little yeah. comments. That's why I like Jump the Shark. He starts the tone, so you feel... It puts a little ease to it. Yeah. I think everybody knew it was coming. I mean, because obviously they had already done it with a couple other things, but I mean, you, yeah, it did. It put like a little bit of a lighthearted note on it. And then Mulder sees them as ghosts too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the truth. I also like Sunshine Days. The Brady Bunch. It's very light and enjoyable. And if you just want to watch something that you can enjoy and you don't have to try too hard, then I think it's enjoyable. I don't know why, but I like. The possibility that the Bradys were like it was just funny to me. I and I like Skinner finally seeing an X file that it, oh it's actually happening without being annoyed at the emphatic way he had to tell people I saw Mulder get abduct- abducted that got annoying during the other season where he's trying to convince people that he did see it. But I well he I did was enjoy- very late to the game so he I had know. to be extra <laughs> insistent. <laughs> but I did enjoy I enjoyed Sunshine Days. Was that David Faustino? Is that his name? From Mary yes. Mary. Mm-hmm. I, I also always enjoy Layla Harrison, so I kind of like Scary Monsters, but I <laughs> recognize that it's perhaps not the most well-written episode or well-executed, but I enjoyed it. 
I was going to say, I only have two from season nine, and that was after trying really hard. Uh, the truth being one. The other being trust no one, which is when, yeah, Scully is emailing Mulder, and there's a lot of press for her to try to contact him. The episode itself is unremarkable, per se, but I do love... She becomes very romantically effusive. Like, their their love is now clearly acknowledged. And I was a big shipper. Like, I was one of those. I liked all the things, really, but <laughs> I enjoyed all the aspects. But I did love personal one just because it, they did a really nice montage of photographs from previous seasons and their moments together. It was a really well-directed episode. It made him a presence again when we'd gone through so many standalones up until the point with just Doggett and Reyes. And so, yeah. I like, I like to trust no one a lot. I have three more that I enjoy. Okay, Nick. Well, we don't have to discuss them. I'm just going to put it out there that I really like Improbable. I deal with it. <laughs> Ellen Green. Oh, there's a lot of good I guest stars it. this season. We can just say that. Ellen Green is awesome. They didn't do enough with her. 4D, I think, is a real good sci-fi, dealing with different dimensions, seeing cast members possibly die, but I thought it was well done, entertaining, good I like the conceit of it. I just didn't like the fact that Reyes was the central character. <laughs> <laughs> <Burn>. <laughs> I think you would enjoy season nine more if you could just get past uh, Reyes. We don't want to. That's the yeah. Thing. <laughs> oh. Sorry. And then I mean, un- you guys may like her though. That's good. it's better for well, them. Well, Sarah and I probably will enjoy the next six, the new six episodes, and she'll be there. <laughs> but so will Mulder and Scully and the Lone Gunman and probably the Smoking Man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the cast list. Trichek is even on the cast list, so I think it'll be some. <laughs> There'll be some flashbacks is yep. the way to get all these dead people in there. Because even or Deep Throat. they really dead? I think would maybe that be, not be the, is, but... Would that not be the worst if that many dead characters <laughs> were... Yeah, every single dead? person who dies oh, they're they're all on. That, I'm be... going to guess that cry check is still really Well, dead. and Deep Throat, you... I, yeah, 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 they already tricked us with that, that, and I don't think that too many people well, thought he was alive in that Well, visions of Deep Throat, so I could see him re-seeing mm-hmm. visions of Deep Throat. So that kind of works. Is Cova Rubius in the new thing? I don't have it noticed. I don't think so. We don't really know case. what became of her, right? She testified um, in the Oh, she did. That's went right. away. Yeah. yeah, she went away. She was very afraid for her life because the conspiracy continues. <laughs> what other ones did you like? Underneath. I liked the idea of it being an x file that he was a killer. Like, that he was so opposed to murder, but there was something psychologically wrong that made him kill, that it even changed his DNA. Like, I just found that interesting. And I thought it was a bit theory, but there's more suspense, and it was a good standalone episode. So, there. And I have quite a few that I liked of season nine. I also liked Audrey Polly, and I also <laughs> liked Lord of the Flies. Because I think uh, Jane, Jane Lynch, Lynch is a genius, so there's that. I, I love as, Jane Lynch. I don't like that episode. Yeah. <laughs> that one's on my gross list. It is on my gross list, but mm-hmm. I... I mean, I like Jane Lynch... In general, but I did not like her on this episode, or really the episode. It's not one of my least favorites. It's okay. Any other favorites? Notice there was not a lot of mention, at least from half of us. Yeah, I just said, <laughs> the, the truth is about it for me for season nine. I'm just pretty, yeah, like I have kind of like a feeling of mediocrity. For the, for the whole season as a whole. Oh, I just kind of repeated myself. But yeah, I, that's pretty much how I feel. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not great. I don't like Reyes. So any particular least favorites? I can say I'm going to just get mine out of the way. Anything that wasn't the episodes I just said was yeah. my least favorite. <laughs> I don't like Hellbound because I just can't. I can't. Well, the skin it's very gross thing for is me. Very gross. I get. I. I think it's a smart episode, but I. Just, yeah, it's gross, isn't it? Like, um, yeah. my least favorite. I like. I by far have a least favorite. Oh, John, Doe. John Doe when he's. A I. It just. It's hard. It doesn't hold my attention. It just drags. Ironically, I don't. I don't mind that. I don't one. Like that one either. And that there's. 
I liked what they were trying to do with it. I so guess. 50 Yeah, this room. and I already kind of said mine was <laughs> Jump the Shark just because I love the Lone Gunman so much, and then their their death, well, for heroic means, off screen, it just didn't feel it didn't fulfill it for me. Like if you're gonna kill them, do it definitively, give them like a swan song, and that felt a little wishy washy. Watching the episode, I know I was like, oh, you don't, you're not actually seeing them. It cuts from them closing the door to their funeral. Yeah, but at the same time, you can at least believe that the lone gunmen faked their own death. Yeah, which is what their plan was. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, I don't like the Lord of the Flies episode. I mean, Kim Manners did a good job directing it, as usual, but I, didn't, I, don't, I don't like that episode. I also do not like Improbable. Sorry. Sorry, Nick. I mean, I like you as a person, but I don't like that episode. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's one of the worst to me. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't fit in for me. And... I think I would like Sunshine Days more if it wasn't where it's at. Like, being the second to the last episode of the whole series was That so is strange. weird. I'll give you that. Yeah. That's a little yeah. weird. Well, um, I, I mean, can... it, it's... it's well, go ahead. The reason I like it in that position is that you have that. Maybe oh. they will just... A, oh, we have proof. People are going to believe that these supernatural things are happening. That's kind of where it starts going. Okay. And if it's anywhere else in this whole series, you're not going to give into that conceit at all. Okay, well, I like that perspective. That actually makes me feel a little bit better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next on one! <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I mean, that's just, that was my original thought on it. But yeah. I've seen that you, but you are right. The second to last yeah. episode of any series has it's a tricky one because it should be like very good representative of the whole show because in the last episode you're going to be tying things up and it has to feel different so that it is a that's a tough um, i think really that was the best i kind of could have done any other thoughts on season nine i was completely crushed that it was done completely i mean yeah the last <laughs> the last season wasn't the greatest by the way i was the super fan so if you listen to the earlier episodes i'm the crazy super fan that started watching when i was way too young to watch it other than that i mean yeah of course it wasn't the greatest but it was still like oh now it's just done <laughs> I do remember the day I found out that season nine was the last season. Like they announced, the official announcement was on the news or on Fox or whatever. Like my parents had friends over and there was a football game on, and I was like, "Guys, guys, they canceled the Xbox." <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> How did uh, the rest of you feel when it ended? I had no idea because I didn't watch it until it was off the air. <laughs> okay. I watched it on and off, but I wasn't like invested. Invested in it, no. Yeah. Yeah, I was I lost midway through season eight, so when I heard it was canceled, I tuned in for the finale, thinking, you know, I'll see, I'll get closure to Mulder and Scully. That's what I watched the show for, mm -hmm. and that, and it was mostly fulfilling. I mean, it's a little, you know, not fulfilling in that, you know, Mulder didn't stop colonization. They just, you know, oh, he found out when it's going to happen. <laughs> well, no, we don't. Know. Well, <laughs> yeah. the answer, I was well, going to say, hopefully. Yeah. Proactively, because I want to believe took place after that date, and That's then true. everything's fine. So they're gonna have to say something either. Oh, in between, he magically stopped it, or something delayed, which hopefully they'd explain. Or there's one little phrase that could solve. I want to believe, and that Chris Carter could just say, "It's not canon," and then we could just ignore that. I want to believe. Well, before we talk about the movies, because that's <laughs> actually our next episode. Sorry. Uh, the thing that I would like, I I will say, Hillary is the super fan. I would probably be very close, but behind. I can say that I was very sad when it went off, but I also felt it was time to go, only because season nine didn't leave me feeling warm fuzzies until the truth, really. And I don't... I disagree with Chris Carter's initial assessment that they could have kept going and just kept replacing the agents. That was wrong, and I think he proved that it was wrong. <laughs> so, the but apparently there are a couple who were okay with it to some degree. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so maybe he, maybe he wasn't far off base. But I do think ultimately the X-Files is Mulder and Scully and the environment in which they find themselves. So without both of them, it just seems to be an exercise in money grubbing a little bit yeah. and ironically enough we will be discussing the expanded universe in our next episode our next part is there anything else you want to say about the last third of the series or anything that we haven't covered 
because we'll get into philosophical questions next time. I think it's obvious that if you divide the series into three thirds, the last third is the weakest. Yeah. yeah, I think that's. I mean, it's true of anything. The creators start to get tired. Things start to get rehashed again. It's just the nature of that many episodes, it's gonna well, things yeah, are gonna yeah, feel the familiar. Of the beast on any show, let alone. I mean, no, most Maybe shows most shows, shows run into that problem in season four. Yeah. So the fact that it ended up more in season eight, seven, eight, losing steam is amazing. It was already twice as much as any other show. Well, I think <laughs> that our podcast panel has. If- efficiently and effectively dissected our last three seasons of the X-Files and our first two seasons. If you didn't already listen to them, please be aware that we do have two prior parts this series covering series one through three, seasons one through three, and seasons four through six. They are available on the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com. They're available on YouTube. They're available on iTunes. They're now available on Stitcher Radio. We have just been picked up by Stitcher Radio as of a couple of weeks ago. So if you prefer your podcast feeds via a radio station, that's where you need to go. Go to stitcherradio.com. But our talk about the X-Files is not done yet. We have another part coming up next, which is our part four, where we're going to actually take this fandom to a whole new level of wicked fandom we've got some rankings we're going to talk about the expanded universe including the films the comic books novels graphic novels whatever we want to talk about we're going to talk about some of our final and maybe departing thoughts for the x-files series proper and we're going to get you all ready for the upcoming miniseries and then the fifth part of this series We'll be discussing the miniseries after it bows, which would be probably be sometime in February or March. So stay tuned for that. But for right now, I'd like to thank Nick, Sarah, Hillary, Kyle, and Jack, the junior podcaster, for joining us for this third part of our X-Files series. Please keep listening, keep watching, find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter. Find us on any of those things I just said, the blog, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, iTunes. We're out there for you to listen, and we hope you enjoy listening. We hope you enjoyed listening about the X-Files, and we hope if you haven't already watched the show that we convinced you to do it, because, hey, it's a really good show. For now, this is Kylie saying thank you. Keep listening. Keep watching. Bye-bye.